Pac-10 play got off to a rolling start on Thursday. For Washington State, the ball just couldn't find the bottom of the net to send their game versus UCLA into overtime. Meantime, across town, USC had to play two overtimes to upset Washington. So don't plan on leaving early. It's the Cougars and Trojans until the final buzzer sounds. Welcome to the beautiful new Galen Center in Los Angeles, California for Pac-10 basketball on FSN. Today, it's the Washington State Cougars and the University of Southern California Trojans. Hi, everybody. Steve Fiziak, Marcus Johnson with you. Washington State almost stunned the number one team in the nation, UCLA, on Thursday before losing by three. Meantime, in case for basketball, ball goes up, hands goes up, ball goes down, hands go down. But it kept the ball there. Well, they've got the seven left in the shot clock, so Young is driving to the hoop, and it's an offensive foul against Nick Young. Uh, that's what Washington State does. I mean, and, and the Trojan coaches talked about it. When you put it on the floor, they're going to be there to pick up an offensive foul. That's just what they do. Here's Nick Young. He's going to turn the corner on the ball screen, and right there, Cal Gill looks like he's kind of sliding to the left, and that's the second foul on Nick Young. So he's got to be careful if he wants to stay in the game. And right there, aggressively trying to steal it. He's got to be aware. He's got two fouls. Misses the three, and there's Taj Gibson. And a steal by Weaver. Spins back inside and hooks it in. What a play by Kyle Weaver. Yeah, just kind of lulled him to sleep. Kyle Weaver with the, with the droopy eyelids kind of walks around like he's sleepwalking. I call him the dream weaver. But right there, just kind of lulled Taj Gibson to sleep. And then sprang right there. Interception layup. And Weaver's doing a nice job on Nick Young so far. I have heard a whole lot from Nick Young. Taylor Rochester now in the game. And Young Lewis, who's come in to hit both of his field goals, one on a steal and layup, and now off the dribble over Taylor Rochester. He's got a high advantage. Good job to drive it. Driving the shorter defender to the spot. The scrum, making it an, an, an ugly game, making you as an opponent, you're just really frustrated out on the floor, as we saw Darren Collison at UCLA the other night. And just kind of really messing with your head. You got to be mentally tough if you if you USC to deal with this kind of defense. I talked to USC's assistant coach Bill Johnson yesterday, and he said we don't want to get frustrated about the Washington State pace of the game. Once again, going inside of Todd Gibson. I mean, it's taking advantage of your advantages. That was one of our keys. And right now, Tim Floyd feels like he's got an advantage inside Todd Gibson going against Robbie Calgo and Ivory Clark, who is the primary defender. This is young Dwight Lewis. Freshman scored two field goals. And we have a whistle away from the basket. Calgary rolled to the hoop, and here is Rochester from outside. Taylor Rochester, who's a transfer from Tulane. A Santa Barbara where he played his high school basketball, and he, he just feisty the eye. It's strong against Gonzaga, and he really goes all out. It's a nice job maintaining pretty decent position defensively, but Dwight Lewis has a major size and had advantage. He should be able to shoot over him anytime he wants to. Calgill's defense has been pretty good against Taj Gibson. Gibson trying to take his man. Left hand will not go, but the foul will be called, and this may go against Calgill. Old school Bernard King style Brooklyn face-up game for Taj, Taj Gibson. But here's a uh, Rochester, again, little pick, little pop. The defender that's guarding you has to help out on that screen, and he just pops to the three-point line for the open look. Now, why would you call it Bernard King? Because Bernard had the quickest shot I have ever seen, but what does Taj do that reminds us? Well, Taj Gibson out of Telecommunications High School in Brooklyn, New York, then went to Calvary Christian in San Fernando, and after two years, Stonebridge Prep in Tarzana, so he's moved around to finding a home here at USC. So he's a mature player. He's making a, he's a little freshman. Nice job. Nice little pump fake, ball fake by Dave, da David Harmerling. And then uh, Nicola. Help me. Copy Vita. Cooper Vita. <laughs> from Belgrade, <laughs> Serbia. <laughs> but just, uh, Cooper Vita does a nice job moving without the basketball. Smart players, played against older players all his life in Serbia. Good double team. Big to big. Baines. How about that? They bring the big fella out. 
Abdullah Injai off the bench, and at 6'11 from Senegal, he got it exactly where he wanted, and USC is back in front by one at the eight-minute mark. But you saw the experience of, of a Taj Gibson, the freshman. He took a dribble for separation to make that pass easier to deliver inside to Injai. A rare turnover by Washington State. Possession efficiency is so critical with Tony Bennett, and we will talk about his pedigree when we come back here on FSN. Tony Bennett is one of the outstanding young coaches in college basketball. Comes from a coaching family. His sister is a fine coach at Indiana and his father Dick obviously great college coach at Wisconsin led him to the final four and Tony was an outstanding player for his dad at Wisconsin Green Bay led him to the tournament and he's one of the greatest players ever in the mid-continent all-time score but Dick's numbers 490 wins great defensive mind at Wisconsin Green Bay Wisconsin and then Washington State retired at the end of last year handed the reins to his son Tony and I asked Tony yesterday Marcus when he thought about coaching and after playing three years in the NBA being injured he went to New Zealand the coach left and he said why don't you be a player coach and I said I really didn't want to do that but he said he liked it. It's in his blood. Yeah. And, and he's got an uncle that's also an outstanding coach. And, and for Tony, as a former player, he played in the NBA two seasons plus a brief time, a third year. He looks at the game still as a player. He's able, he didn't even name his defensive matchups until right before the jump ball because he wanted to get a gut feel for how his guys were looking and feeling today. And uh, one of the all-time great shooters is still the all-time three-point percentage leader in NCAA history, just under 50%. Concerned Kovrivica, Cowgill, and Clark all have two fouls each, and Young and Gibson have two fouls each for USC. You know what, uh, people from Louisiana, you know what our favorite pastime is? Hanging out with other people from Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> That's what mother says. I'm not going to have any Louisiana jokes. <laughs> no we, more. We just love, we just love people from Louisiana. We just love people from Louisiana. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> now, Washington State would love to score a bucket. But Oh, that's a nice move, but he did not finish, and the rebound pulled down by Injai. Uh, uh, just, uh, just riddle me this, oh, mighty physiac, oh, knowledgeable Steve. Ivory Clark is a six-foot-eight-inch high jumper in high school. Why did he just not dunk that basketball? He leads this team in slam dunks, and then he, all of a sudden he tries to go finesse on the finish. Maybe he should be working on his layups. Yeah, like well, John Wooden used to do in the old days when dunking was down, illegal. Man, but he throw it get, down, you say. Yeah, he's got elbows all up rim level. You just got to turn that thing over and just be sure. I mean, I understand the layup principle, but when you got the, when you high, when you six six and you high jump six eight, <laughs> you just dunk it. make sure you get the <laughs> yeah, two points yeah. because he's had a frustrating first half. They posted him twice. He missed two shots. He's committed two fouls and now misses this dunk that could have tied the game at 23. Meantime, Cougars only shooting 32%. The Trojans at 53. Remember, USC's defense is number one in the Pac-10 conference, limiting opponents to just 34% field goal shooting. Tremendous defense. When you look at what they've done, you talked about that. I mean, 12 of the 14 teams they played, they've shot under 40 and ranked third in the nation behind UConn and Texas A&M. So they're, they're stingy also. We, we talk about the, the Dick Bennett and Fleece influence defense of Washington State, but Tim Floyd has shown himself a, an excellent defensive coach. There's the double down low, but oh, the shot over two defenders, Taj Gibson. Big lift for USC as they have their biggest lead of the ball game on Gibson's jumper. And again, that Bernard King quick release back to the basket. Brooklyn style post up move. They do a great job taking advantage of their advantage. That's Gibson's length over Ivory Clark. Knocks down the shot. Well played first half. Washington State, though, trailing by 425 21. They are 4 and 1 when they're trailing at the half this year. We'll come back with our halftime show here at the Galen Center on the campus of USC.